Welcome to Worship at Lakeview Lutheran Church on Madison's North Side. We're glad, however you're accessing this video, we're glad that you are here. And you are certainly welcome to share the video with others who might appreciate being a part of this congregation in some way. I don't have a lot of announcements, but just want to remind you that the quarterly blood drive for the Red Cross comes up here at Lakeview on June 16th. And the, blood, the Red Cross is indeed in need of blood donations. We appreciate all the people who came to the last quarterly drive and we encourage you, if you're comfortable and able, to come out again for this one on the 16th. It will be from noon until 5 p.m. in East Hall downstairs. You must make a reservation either on the Red Cross website or by calling the church office when Laura is here. She can make that reservation for you. Also remember that you should not bring anybody else into the blood drive, only the person giving blood should enter the building, that person should be wearing a mask and should wash their hands upon entry. So please consider donating blood on that day. Thank you to everybody who um, has contributed to the Porchlight financial gift. Uh, we've been doing that since we weren't able to provide the May meal because of other circumstances during the pandemic at Porchlight. To date, and um, I'm recording this a week earlier than you're seeing it, but to date, over $600 has been donated to Porchlight, so we're grateful for all of you who have done that. I'd also like to just note that we anticipate returning to in-person worship service on June 28th, so more will be coming to you about that. We'll be practicing social distancing. We will wear masks. We will sanitize our hands upon entering the worship space. We will only use the front door to the sanctuary, which you're familiar with to enter the building. And we will not be doing any public singing or sharing of touch in, in any way. Also likely on that day, a congregation meeting will be called to approve the purchase of the boiler system which we have all been contributing money for at this time, and we look forward to getting that completed. So with that, I will invite you to settle back into your recliners, um, grab your full cup of coffee, and prepare your hearts for worship during Lynn's Prelude. <laughs>
How majestic is your name in all the earth. Your glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and with honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. We have experienced the God of creation made known in Jesus Christ, who is with us always through the Holy Spirit. We celebrate and give thanks for the mystery of the Holy Trinity in word and sacrament as we profess the creed and as we are sent into the world to bear witness to our faith. Give us the strength of the Trinity to forgive sins, to proclaim your grace, and to love our neighbors as we love you. In the name of the three in one, amen. I invite Dana Dalton and Lynn Hachem forward to sing the duet, Sing for Joy. Holy Trinity weekend comes from the 28th chapter of St. Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. I invite Dana Dalton, Nancy Stilwell, and Lynn Natum forward for the trio, The King of Love My Shepherd Is.
Today, Jesus makes the church essential. We have always been and we always will be. Last weekend when we celebrated the festival of Pentecost and you were all wearing your red, we celebrated the coming of God's Holy Spirit and the foundation of the church, the organized institution of the church. Now I guess that when that originally happened, that no one could conceive of how the church might look and how it might function in the 21st century. Much of the image of the church that we have today, including these big buildings with highly decorated rooms and rows of seating, much of that is all about human design. Kitchens and dining halls and gymnasiums and libraries and classrooms and offices were not certainly a consideration of the church of the Pentecost on that day of Pentecost. So I think it's important for us to remember that much of our definition of the church today is modern and of human design. And the human part of the church is that thing that changes throughout time, space, and location. So today, as Jesus makes us essential, he defines for us what our job at the, of, as the church should be, and that's the part that doesn't change over time. The Gospel reading for this weekend is about sending the disciples forth as Jesus' messengers. Jesus calls us to go out, go out and guide other people to follow him, teaching them to observe everything that he has commanded and taught us. Jesus wants us to go as the church and to do the will of God. And repeatedly the Bible tells us what God's will is. And it's quite simple. To love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. That's not difficult. We have been given all of the gifts to be able to do that. And then to be even more specific, Jesus tells us exactly who our target group should be. And he says to us, go to all, keyword, all nations and bring God's news to everyone. This is that spot where we learn that Jesus probably wouldn't be real thrilled with a sign that says, God bless America. Jesus would want that sign to read, God bless the world. Loving God and loving our neighbors as ourselves does not have boundaries or borders. All nations. So before Jesus makes the church essential and sends us out to do God's will, he gives us his credentials. And I like credentials. I'm one of those people that when I'm going to listen to somebody, I want to know that they have the authority, they have the wisdom and the knowledge to say what they're going to say. Jesus tells us why it is that we should listen to him as he calls us to go out. Why should we trust what he calls us to do? He tells us that his authority, all authority, in heaven and on earth has been given to him. He's the Messiah. He's the one sent from God, and he has been exalted through his death and his resurrection. He exercises his authority and his lordship by sending us, his followers, from all times and all places to go out and to do his work. We are called to imitate Jesus. We are essential. We always have been, and we always will be. Well, we've certainly heard a lot about essential workers and essential institutions in the last three months. Last week, we heard that the government decided that churches and other faith communities were essential. But that wasn't news to us within the church and within those faith communities. If you have an understanding of the Bible and of the way that God works, you know that the church never ever stopped being essential 
even during those times and even this, during this time right now, when we can't gather in a community and when we, as a community and when we can't participate in the Holy Meal. The church has never closed. Marilyn Miller, a member of this congregation, posted a wonderful piece about the church on Facebook last week, on our church Facebook page. It's a response about the church being essential. It was written by Pastor Dion Johnson. He is the bishop-elect of the Episcopal Church in Missouri. Pastor Johnson did a wonderful job of explaining how the church is sent to Jesus to do Jesus' work during this pandemic. So in case you haven't had a chance to see that brief article, I'm going to repeat it right here. So Johnson says, the work of the church is essential. The work of caring for the lonely, the marginalized, and the oppressed is essential. The work of speaking truth to power and seeking justice is essential. The work of being a loving, liberating, and life-giving presence in the world is essential. The work of welcoming the stranger, the refugee, and the undocumented is essential. The work of reconciliation and healing and caring is essential. The church does not need to open because the church never closed. We who make up the body of Christ, the church, love God and our neighbors and ourselves so much that we will stay away from our buildings until it is safe. We are the church. Today, I would add to Pastor Johnson's statement, that's wonderful as it stands, but I would just add that the church is also essential right now to stand up and to condemn the intentional murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The church is essential to speak out against the racism that is prevalent within human beings and within institutions in our society. And the church is essential in supporting the emergency personnel who do not exhibit racist ideology and who are working hard every day to keep our communities safe. Now there's one more thing in the gospel reading today. That final sentence of the reading is critical. As you go forth to be the church, remember that Jesus goes with you always to the end of the age. Many people remind me that the church can be hypocritical and sinful and somewhat screwed up. And my answer to that is, yeah, you're right, we are. Because the church is made up of human beings who have the ability to commit sins of commission as well as sins of omission. But here's the thing, the church has continued to exist for over 2,000 years. And I have faith that the church will continue to exist long, long into the future. It will change, and the human part of the church will evolve, and will find more appropriate ways to love God and to love our neighbors, just as we always have. And that long-term existence of the church provides me faith-based evidence that the promise of Jesus to always be with us has indeed been kept. So go and be the church. Love God. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. You are essential today and always. Amen. The hymn, You Are Holy, is you're invited to sing if you wish in your homes. The words will appear on your screen.
Together we profess our faith using the traditional words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Sustainer, you have given us what we need to go out and make your love known to the world. Thank you for trusting us with this, this essential work. May the church stand for justice, fairness, and responsible actions. We stand today condemning the racist murder in Minneapolis, and we pray for the family and friends of George Floyd and all victims of racist ideology and unnecessary violence. Keep responsible police officers and emergency personnel safe as they work to protect communities. Give us the desire to end bigotry, discrimination, oppression, and hatred throughout the world. We continue to pray that people will use good judgment and make wise decisions during this time of the coronavirus. Help us all to remember that our actions are not just about ourselves, but for the sake of others. We pray for an end to gun and weapon violence and death in our community. Thank you for giving us the resources to support our food pantry, the Porchlight Homeless Program, community blood drives, and contact with each other during this time. Help us to hold on to the joy won through the resurrection of Jesus. Bring comfort and peace to all who are grieving. Bring healing and hope to anyone who is in poor physical health or struggling with poor mental health, including Georgia, Art, Ellen, Lynn, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Together we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The words to the hymn, Holy, 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 will appear on your screen.
receive the blessing. May God who created you, the world and everything in it and Jesus, the one sent by God to redeem you and give you the gift of salvation and the Holy Spirit of God moving through you every day, grant you love, hope, peace, and joy. Amen. You are essential. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words to the hymn, Go Make Disciples, will appear on your screen.